Today I want to talk about React Strap, which is a great way to add some styling and do it in a way that's consistent with how React builds components. So React Strap is a whole bunch of components that work with Bootstrap. So to use it, we need to install both the Bootstrap CSS and the React Strap component. So I'm in my terminal here and I'm inside the project folder, starting from my project folder. Now I can use npm install dash dash save or I can use yarn add depending on which package manager you're using then I want to bring in react strap I need that package and I also need bootstrap but we want to make sure that we're bringing in a bootstrap version that works with the current version of react strap so I'm going to import 4.1.3 now I already have both of these installed if I look at my package.json file here it is in my project you can see that I have Bootstrap 4.1.3 and React Strap 6.5.0. Those are the versions that I currently have installed, which, perfect, that's what I want to have. React Strap, homepage of the website, it's reactstrap.github.io. Basic instructions on how to set it all up, they're all in here. Components will be where you find most of the useful information. Here's a list of all the components and if you've done anything with Bootstrap before, you'll recognize most of these. These components will let us add Bootstrap things into our React site in a style that you're used to from React. So these are examples right here of the components. And here's a sample of the JavaScript code. You can see that we're adding components that are of the type alert. We need to import the component or a list of components that we're going to use on the page from React Strap. We're going to be importing the Bootstrap CSS up at the top level just in our, our main app.js file. And then this is all we need to do on the pages was add in React Strap, add the components as we want, and you'll find that through all these components, go to any one of these components, you will find a section at the bottom of the examples called Properties. These are all the properties that you can add into the component. So class name, you want to have a CSS class name of your own that you add on to here. Color is the one that they're using the example to change the text color and the background color. Toggle is a function. Is open is a Boolean, true or false, as to whether or not you want it to be open when it first loads. So we have all these things. Uh, card, for example. This is what the cards look like if you've done them in Bootstrap. You recognize them, they look the same way. The Bootstrap website, if you're looking for the references, uh, getbootstrap.com. And if you go into the documentation section, you'll find that this is now uh, the default version. For a long time, while version 4 was being built, you had the documentation, and version 3 of, I think it was 3.3.5, was the version of Bootstrap that was on the website homepage. Now we're up to version 4.1. This is released, this is the current version, and this is the version that we're using with React Strap. So a simple example here, import, and these are the components that I wanna bring in. To use cards, I've got all the different bits and pieces. Each one of them has a, a component name. So we zoom in here, take a look. Card has a card image positioned at the top. That's one of the properties. Setting a width is 100% of the card card body, title, subtitle, text, button. So all these things we have to, for each one of the components, we have to make sure that we're importing those from React Strap. And like I was saying before, properties. For the card, for the card body, card columns, all of these things have properties that we can add. Now I've built a simple example. Oh, I've got to start it up again here. So we'll run our yarn start from our project folder. That will launch our React app here. And I'm using a whole bunch of these components just to show you how you can uh, build them together. There we are. So I have a Jumbotron component up in the top. I've got a button where I've got the uh, block component turned on. Here's an alert. And you'll see if I refresh this, that faded in. So let's take a look inside of the components themselves. All right, app, I have a function right here. If I click on the button, here's my button component. 
up here at the top, I'm importing button and jumbotron and alert and fade. So I'm importing those four things from React Strap and I'm putting in my bootstrap CSS to make sure that I've got that up at my top level. It'll be used by all my other components. My clicky function is my on click function right here. My color outline block was another property for buttons. It's set to true. That is what's making it stretch across the whole length or the whole width rather of my jumbotron. I'm going to bring up the uh, react dev tools here. Oops, not Redux, but React. There we go. So this is my Jumbotron. Here's my button with the property set to... Where is it? There we go. My block prop set to true. That's the one that makes it switch all the way up here. If we come back and we change this to false, which is the default value. Save that. Come back in here. This is the default value for buttons so they look like this. Uh, the alert. We have the alert right here with the color success and I've wrapped it inside of a fade element. So on in is true. Mount on enter true. This means when the page is loading we're going to add it onto the page. When it's appearing yes we want it to fade in that's set to true. On mount on exit, true. So when we're leaving, it's going to fade out. So if I clicked on a link to go someplace else or do something on the page, when it disappears, it's going to fade away and then it will fade back in if we're on the same page. Um, tag. What tag do you want to use inside of here? Uh, the class name. This is a bootstrap class. MT-3. I've actually got that page up here the spacing inside the utilities section, the documentation for utilities. We've got all these letters that we can combine. So M is for margin, T for the top. If I said PT, we'd talk about padding top, and then these numbers imply the size. So whatever the spacer value is, times three. That is the amount of space right here. So around, the on the top of my component here, I want three times whatever the spacer value is right here. And here's my card element. This is being, being brought in from an, a second page. Uh, right here, my main element. Inside the main, that's where I'm building a table. Okay, I've brought in my main.css because I wanted to do a little bit more styling. You can see I just added some background colors to make it look more like the uh, the examples on the React Strap site. I wanted to have a little bit more spacing around the table elements and a background color on them. And for my card, I wanted to limit its width to 25% of whatever space it was inside of. That's why my card is only this wide, is because I've added this max width. Back inside the main element, Here's my table. We have a container element. Inside that, there are rows, and inside the rows, we have columns. And here are the class names that we're adding in there. So the small, extra small, three, and six. So these ones will span the full 12. If you're familiar with how tables are built in Bootstrap, you know that every row has 12 columns. And your numbers that you're putting inside of here this is how you want to divide the 12 up. I've got a three and a three and a six. Here I've got two sixes. Here I put four things in. I didn't add a class, so these four should fill up. There they are. The four will fill up the whole width. Here is my three, six, three, and here's my two sixes. With just the class call, which is what you get when you add a call element, so the column element here, if you don't give any classes to it, it will fill the whole space. Here, I've got four of them. They will fill the whole space. And this is just something that you're getting by bringing in my container, row, and call from React Strap. We get these components that are using Bootstrap CSS to build it. And it's a lot simpler than having to write out all the divs that you would normally use with the CSS with Bootstrap. 
All right, so React Strap, great tool, very easy to use. Um, I encourage you to come in and take a look at the various components. Even if you haven't used Bootstrap before, it's really pretty simple um, to use React Strap. You import Bootstrap CSS, and then you're just using these components. Even if you know nothing about Bootstrap, you can add these components into your React application if you know a little bit about React. So we know that we can import components that we want to use, whether we've written them or somebody else has written them. We're bringing in components and putting them on the page. You can see it's just simply a React component. It has a render method. Inside the render method, we are returning all the bits and pieces that we want to build. And that's it. So I hope that helps you out. Um, I will post the links to the React Strap website and the Bootstrap website uh, inside the comments. And I will also post uh, the two pages here, my app.js and my main.js, so that you have those, and the main CSS as well. I'll post the links to those code gists so you can have them. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.